What's going on guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're gonna talk about the checkbox for custom Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about the mighty checkbox for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube for 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the checkbox for custom Kinter. And here we have a checkbox right here. I can toggle it on and off. I've made it really big just so we can see it. Uh, that's not the default size, obviously. But if we click this and then hit the button, it says, excellent, let's play. If we uncheck it, it says, are you sure you don't wanna play? So we've got it set up to where we have a button here. We'll also do it to where if you just click the checkbox itself, it does something. And then we can also clear the checkbox. We can toggle it on and off programmatically and do all kinds of things. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter playlist. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it CTK underscore checkbox. So let's come down here and create our checkbox. I'm gonna call this my underscore check. And this is gonna be a custom Kinter dot CTK check box. And notice the capitalization here. We've got CT and CTK is capitalized. The C in checkbox and the B also in checkbox is also capitalized, a little weird. So we wanna put this in root and we want the text to say, would you like to play a game? And we need several things here. First, we need to designate a variable. And we do that by calling variable. So I'm gonna call this check underscore var. Now we haven't created this yet, so we need to do that. Let's come up here and define that. And this is just gonna be a custom kinter dot string var. And this is just a regular tkinter string variable, a string var that we've talked about many times in just regular kinter. But to use them in custom kinter, you use a custom kinter string var or a custom kinter int var or whatever. So I'm gonna set the value right away to off. And you can set this to anything you want. You just need to be able to keep track of it. And it's also popular to use integers here. So instead of value being off, you might have it be two. If that's the case, you would change this to an int var. Uh, but I'm just gonna keep it a string var and we're gonna set this to off. And this is gonna designate when the checkbox is unchecked, right? It's off. We'll set that there and that looks good. Next, we need to designate an on value. We'll set that equal to on and designate an off value, we'll set that equal to off. Next, we need to my underscore check dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 40 to really push it down the screen. Now let's just save this and look at it. Now let's just save this and run it just to make sure we did everything okay here. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore checkbox. And when we do, we get this little checkbox that says, would you like to play a game? When we click it, nothing actually happens, but it looks nice and uh, all right, so far so good. So right off the bat, let's make it to where when we check this box, something happens. Now, normally you probably don't want that because this is gonna be usually part of a form. And like, you don't wanna submit the whole form when somebody checks the checkbox, right? But if you're just doing this in your app for some other reason, you may want some action to happen when somebody checks this box right away without having to click a button. So how do we do that? Well, super easy, head back over here to our code. And here we just give this a command, just like a button. And I'm gonna call this game, whatever. So here, let's come up here and let's define game. And what do we wanna do? Well, whenever somebody checks this thing, let's change some text on the screen. So I'm gonna come down here, let's create a label. I'm gonna call it my label. And this is gonna be a custom kinter.ctk label. We wanna put it in root, and for now we want the text to equal nothing. So let's my underscore label dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Now, anytime we check this box up here, we want to change the text of my label. So we can copy this, head back over here, go my underscore label dot configure, and set the text equal to whatever we want. So let's say you clicked the thing, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. So let's go ahead and save this, make sure that works. 
run this guy, come back over here. When we click this, now it says you click the thing. Now when we click it again, sort of the same thing happens. How do we designate whether a thing has been clicked or unclicked? Well, we could do that too. In fact, let's do that in a minute. Let's instead, let's create a button to do that. It'd just be sort of easier. Let's come down here. Let's go my underscore button. This is going to be a custom kinter.ctk button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, I don't know, submit. And let's give this a command of game. So now we're going to take this command of game off of the checkbox itself, right? So we'll take that off there. Now, whenever we click this button, it'll run this function. So let's my underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad wide 20 or so push down screen. And let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So now we can check and uncheck this box all the time and nothing happens until we click the button. And then when we click the button, that function runs and it says you click the thing, right? So now what if we don't have this checked and we click the button? We're getting the same text here. How do we do something else if the thing is unchecked? How do we even know if it's unchecked? All right, so let's do some logic here. Let's go if check underscore var dot get. This will allow us to get whatever our string var is. Remember our check var string var? By default, it's set to off. If we wanted this to be on, we could set it to on. Now, whenever the program runs the first time, the checkbox is automatically going to be checked. But we want it to be off by default. But we can get that state by calling check underscore var dot get. So if check underscore var dot get equals on, then let's put this guy back in my underscore label config. You click the thing. Else, let's do this again. And let's say you didn't click the thing. So, all right, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over to our terminal. Let's run this guy again. And now we click this, we click submit. It says you click the thing. If we uncheck it and click it again, it says you didn't click the thing. Pretty cool. So there are some other options you can do as far as sort of the mechanics of this thing. You can clear the checkbox. You can toggle it on and off. You can set it on or set it off programmatically. And let's kind of look at those things right now. And after that, we'll talk about some of the ways you can configure this and make it look better. So let's come down here by our my button thing. And underneath our button, let's add a clear button. And this is going to be a custom kinter dot C T K button. We want to put it in a root. We want the text to equal clear. And let's give this a command of, I don't know, clear me. Right? Uh, so let's go clear underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of like 20, push down screen a little bit, or let's say 10. And we can come up here and we can define clear me. And here, this is just going to be our checkbox. So this is going to be my check. So we can copy this, my check dot deselect. Right? So, all right, that will deselect it. Let's save it and run it, make sure that worked. I'm going to click this, click submit. Now, if I click clear, boom, it disappears. We don't have to click submit. We can click clear at any time and it will always clear. So that's cool. Next, we can toggle. So let's come down here and create a toggle underscore button. And let me just copy this whole thing. Paste it in here. Instead of it saying clear, let's have it say toggle. And I'll change this as well. Now to do that, we call the toggle function. Now we could do the same thing we did for our clear button, right? We could create a function called toggle me and do this same thing inside of it. Or you could just come down here, in which case it would be my underscore check dot toggle. Notice these parentheses. Or instead of doing that, you could just call right from the button itself. And we could come down here and my underscore check dot toggle. Now, normally to call it in a function, you would use parentheses, but when you call it from a button, you just call dot toggle. So let's go ahead and save this guy, run it again. Come back over here. Now we just click this toggle button. You can see the checkbox toggles on and off. It's kind of cool. We could still do the same stuff here. We could still clear it. Okay, cool. The last thing I want to look at sort of programmatically of things we can do is select or deselect programmatically. So I'm going to call this a select button and set that equal to, I'm just going to come up here and 
copy all of this stuff. And let's call this select. And again, instead of toggle, we would just call select. And again, if you were going to call this in a function like we did with our clear button, you could, you would just instead you would go dot select like this, you would have the parentheses on there. But again, when we're doing it from a button, we just leave the parentheses off. It's just a kinter thing. So all right, uh, we need to change this to select button. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Come back over here, rerun this guy. Now when we click select, boom, there it is. We already know how to uncheck it, deselect it. We just use the clear button. So now we could programmatically click it or unclick it without having to click it or unclick it. So, all right, that's cool. Now let's talk about ways we could change the style of the actual checkbox itself. What can we do? Well, the nice thing about custom Kinter is there's all kinds of customization you could do for your widgets for all of them, basically. So we can first change the size of this thing. We could go checkbox underscore width. And this is in pixels. I'm going to set it to 50. You can also go checkbox underscore height. Again, this is in pixels. So I'm just going to go 50. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how that looks. So now we have a giant box. That's kind of cool. Uh, whatever. You could also change the size of the text, right? That's pretty simple. It's almost always the same in every widget. We just call the font. And here I'm going to go Helvetica and like, I don't know, size 18, something like that. Save this guy, run it, see how this looks. All right, now the text is bigger. That's kind of cool. Uh, the box itself is a box. We can change it to a rounded thing. We can change the corner radius of this. You can often change the corner underscore radius of widgets in custom Kinter. I'm going to set this equal to 50. The higher the number, the more rounded it becomes as we've seen in other widgets. Save this and run it. Uh Oh, I misspelled radius. <laughs> Let's clear the screen. Corner radius. There we go. Save this guy and run it. And now we get a nice round checkbox. I don't know, that looks kind of good, actually. Very cool. We can change the background color. Ironically, it's with FG color, which stands for foreground color. If we set this equal to, let's say, red. And then again, you can use your hex color codes, or you could just say, you know, red. Go ahead and save this guy, run it again. Boom, when we check it, now it's red. You notice we can also hover when we hover over it, it changes color when it's checked or unchecked, we can change that hover color too. you'll never guess how we call the hover underscore color. And if we want to set that equal to green, I don't know why in the world you would want to, but there we go. I always try and pick the most obnoxious colors possible. So now when we hover it's green, when we check it, still when it hovers, it changes to green. All right, that's cool. What else can we do? We can change the text color. So let's go text underscore color. We'll put that at red also. Save this guy and run it. Boom, now our text color is red. Eh, whatever. Obviously, you would use a better color than that. And what else can we do? We can set the hover to true or false. So maybe we don't want it to be able to hover. So we could set the hover equal to false. Notice there's no quotation marks in false. It's just the word false. It's a Boolean. Go ahead and save this and run it. Now, when I hover, it doesn't change color. We can still check it. It just doesn't change color when it hovers. All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty much all the customization we can do. There's one more thing we can do. We can change this text programmatically, right? So like when we submit, for instance, we might want to change the text of this. How do we do that? Well, same thing. We create another string var. So let's come up here and let's call this text var. <laughs> I don't know. And it's the same deal. We call it custom kinter dot string var. And let me make a little comment here. Uh, the checkbox text. And this is going to be the checkbox state, let's call it. Uh, for the value here, I'm going to have it as what this is right here. All right? Would you like to play a game? If we want to then change this, for instance, when we click the button, we could come down here and just call text underscore var. 
and set the dot set function of that and then just put in whatever you want. Uh, so we could just say awesome. And then I'm gonna copy this thing again. And let's do it in our clear button when we clear everything. Let's set the text underscore var dot set back to the default of would you like to play a game? So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this guy one more time. So here when we click this thing and click submit, uh oh, nothing changed. We got an error, we got an error. Ah, we forgot to add it into our actual checkbox itself. So come down here and add text variable and then set that equal to whatever you've defined this as up here. No quotation marks, make sure that's like that, just the variable itself. All right, so go ahead and save this, add back over here, run this guy one more time. This should work now. We click this, we hit submit, boom, it says awesome. When we click clear, boom, it goes back to normal. Awesome, normal, awesome, <laughs> normal. So that's how you can change that programmatically. And just like, come back here with this, we can also get whatever it is currently just by calling text underscore var dot get. And if we wanted to, you know, print this onto the screen or something, you know, whatever, you would do it like that. So that's the checkbox, all kinds of cool stuff there. Lots of configuration, lots of customization. You can change the color, the font size, the height and width of the actual box. You can make it a circle instead of a box. All kinds of cool things and fairly simple to use and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, you get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.